Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bellevue City Council meeting. It is Tuesday, July 6, 2021 at 6 p.m. We will start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and if you would remain standing for the invocation, Pastor Andrew DiOrio from the Midlands Baptist Church is here, and they're located at 2407 Chandler Road East in Bellevue. Let's pray. Our Father, it's a joy to get to come before you tonight, and we are thankful for your many blessings upon our nation. We are mindful of the many years in which we have to celebrate your independence, celebrate your protection, your provision, your grace upon this land. Thank you for freedoms that you give us, the liberties that we enjoy. Thank you for those who've protected them served for them, those who've died for those liberties. Father, as we think about the council meeting tonight, the agenda for this evening, we pray for your help, for your wisdom, for your grace. I pray for our mayor, our city council members, the administrators that are here, Lord, others who've been making decisions tonight. I pray that you'd give them wisdom, help them to know what they ought to do in their various responsibilities. Lord, we are grateful that you uh, can and do rule in our hearts, rule in our land, Father. And we pray that tonight your will would be done. Uh, we thank you for your love, for your grace in our lives. We are grateful for how you uh, you do work. And so thank you for all that you've blessed us with as a people, as a city, Lord. We pray for your protection upon our first responders, our police officers and firemen, military members, and Lord, all those who are serving in this community. We thank you for them. Lord, ask again for your help tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor DiOrio. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Susan, would you take roll call, please? Councilman Stenson. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman McCobb. Here. Councilman Preister. Here. Councilman Burns. Here. And Councilwoman Welsh. Here. Thank you. Thank you. This meeting will be conducted in accordance with the Nebraska Open Meetings Act. A copy of that act is located on the rear wall of the council chambers. Item 5, approval of agenda, consent agenda, claims and advisory committee reports. 5A, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Councilman Burns? I move that we approve the agenda. Second. Motion by Burns, second by Preister. Any comments or questions? Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to amend the agenda, amend by moving item 16A, then 15A to follow after 16C. I'm sorry, 16F. Can't read my own writing. So moving 16A to follow 16F. Moving 16A, then 15A at the, the conclusion of 16F, as in Frank. Okay. All right. And I sent an email to everyone in advance. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, we have a uh, motion by Burns, second by Preister. Oh. Okay, we're going to vote on the amendment first. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Okay, motion by Preister, seconded by Burns to amend the agenda, moving 16A and 15A after 16F. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. Uh, I have a motion by Burns, second by Preister to approve the agenda, and that would be as amended. Any comments or questions? Please vote. Second. Just a second. Okay. 
All voting yes, motion carried. Thank you, item 5B, approval of the consent agenda. Items marked with an asterisk are approved where this item is unless otherwise removed. Do I have a motion? Yeah. Councilman Pricer. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Pricer, second by Cook to approve the consent agenda. Any comments or questions? Please vote. Mayor Height, could I have you uh, read the motion again? Uh, motion by Pricer, second by Cook to approve the consent agenda. All voting yes, motion carried. Thank you. Item seven, we have no special presentations. Item nine, uh, we have no approved citizen communications. None were received. Item 10 is liquor licenses. 10A, recommend approval of application for Lance A. Kramer as the new manager for You Save Foods, Inc. doing business as Family Fair 776 and Family Fair 788 at 5101 Harrison Street and 1510 Harlan Drive, respectively. And I will open this up for public hearing. So if there's anybody here to speak regarding the uh, application for liquor license or as the new manager, please come forward. Is the applicant in the house? Okay. Anyone wishing to speak? The public hearing is open. Seeing nobody come forward, I'll close the public hearing and I'll accept a motion. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion that we uh, recommend to the Nebraska Liquor C Control Commission approval of the application for Lance A. Kramer as a new manager for You Save Foods, Inc. doing business as Family Fair 776 and Family Fair 788 at 5101 Harrison Street and 50, 1510 Harlan Drive, respectfully, in Bellevue. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, seconded by Welch. Any comments or questions regarding 10A? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carried. Thank you, item 10B, recommend approval of application for Andrew R. Gunther as the new manager for STL of Nebraska, Inc., doing business as Target Store 1537 at 3808 Twin Creek Drive, Bellevue. I will open this application up for public hearing on 10B. So if there's anyone here wishing to speak uh, regarding the application and new manager, please come forward. Are you the applicant? Yes, Andrew Gunther. Okay, thank you for showing up. You um, you don't need to add anything, but we'll know here, you're here for questions if anybody has oh, any. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody wishing to speak? Seeing nobody, I will close the public here and entertain a motion. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion that we recommend to the Nebraska Liquor Control Commission the approval of the application of Andrew R. Genther as a new manager for STL of Nebraska, Inc., doing business as Target Store 1537 at 3808 Twin Creek Drive, Bellevue. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch to approve 10B. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting, voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, and again, thanks for showing up. Item 11, ordinances for adoption, third reading, 11A, ordinance number 4039, an ordinance to amend Article 1, Chapter 20 of the Bellevue Municipal Code by adding a new section 20-14 regarding the use of certain medians being prohibited. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4039, an ordinance to amend Article 1, Chapter 20 
of the Bellevue Municipal Code by adding a new section 20-14 regarding the use of certain medians being prohibited and to provide an effective date. Thank you. I will take a motion. Councilman Stenson. Make a motion we approve ordinance number 4039. Motion by Stenson, seconded by Preister. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 12, ordinances for public hearing, second reading. 12A, ordinance number 4040, request to rezone lot one 370 square replat six, being a replat of lots one and two, 370 square replat four, from BG to RG8-PS, for the purpose of multifamily residential development, applicant is Sage Capital LLC, general location is 36th Street and Lexington Ave. Susan, would you read that ordinance? Ordinance number 4040 an ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the city of Bellevue, Nebraska, as provided for by Article 3 of Ordinance Number 3619, by changing the zone classification of land located at or about 36th Street and Lexington Avenue, more particularly described in Section 1 of the ordinance, and to provide an effective date. Thank you, and I'm also gonna read item 12A1, request of a small subdivision plat for lot one, 370 square, replat six, being a replat of lots one and two, 370 square, replat four. So those will be heard in the same public hearing, which I will open up now. Is the applicant with us this evening? I'll let you speak first. And uh, again, it's open for public hearing, so if there's anybody that wants to speak, uh, Absolutely. Uh, Brian Ackard, uh, 119 South 49th Avenue. Um, I'm here to uh, represent the applicant as part of the project and here to answer any questions that uh, anybody may have. Um, did notice there was a couple letters that were sent in. Uh, if I could address those now, that, that'd be fine. Yep. Um, so the, the first one uh, had to do with uh, Sage being a out-of-state developer. They are actually in uh, locally uh, here in Omaha, so uh, the, their address is here and uh, know them personally really well, so they're definitely not from uh, out of state. Um, and then secondly, there was a question about uh, rainwater uh, collection on site. Uh, we are regrading the site, um, so we do have to basically drain everything to the north uh, away from the southern property limits. Um, there are two detention basins that are on the north side of site there next to Lexington. Um, but as we're regrading everything, we're actually changing those uh, 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 ridge lines just a little bit. So there's actually less area that's going to be draining to the south than there currently is today. Um, and anything that's being paved is all going to be have to be caught into those two detention basins, that, which are then taken to the north into the storm sewer. So um, if there's any other further questions, uh, here to answer anything that's needed. Okay, thank you. And the public hearing is open, so if there's anybody here to speak for or against this uh, application, please come forward. In the meantime, I do have a question for Tammy. Um, I am familiar with the properties to the south. Is the city happy with the drainage plan, um, I'm assuming? Yes, uh, drainage preliminary drainage plan was submitted, and our engineers did look at that, and yes, they are comfortable with what has been submitted from the applicant's engineer. Uh, public hearing is open. Anyone here wishing to speak, please come forward. Seeing nobody, I will close the public hearing. Uh, third reading will be July 20th, 2000. Oh, sorry. Councilman Cook. Sorry, Mary. Thank you. I just got a question for you and for Tammy. Uh, how many stories are these uh, buildings? Uh, these are three stories. Uh, on the back side, there's a few garages that face the parking lot. Um, then on the uh, the 36th Street side, as well as the Lexington side, and that'd be three stories of residential. So they're going to be three stories. The back side of them will be a garage underneath. Yes, yeah. Okay. So it'd be two two stories of housing up above those. And how many how many units are there? Fifty one. Fifty one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then thank you very much. Yeah. That's that's all the questions. I, one thing I would like to comment is that, and Tammy sort of answered it. Drainage. I drove behind the 
townhomes and apartments that are to the south of that, and you just can't dump water on them. From I mean, you got to collect it at the front end because some of that really goes down uh, towards the townhomes and the apartments, mm -hmm. and not so much from the apartments to the townhomes. That really is lower than your lot. It is, yes. So I, I just think that, and, and you've had, and Tammy answered the question. I think your drain ponds are more so up on Lexington, and that's where you're going to try to move all the water. Mm -hmm. um, and all the parking lots do have curb and gutter on them as well. So okay. basically everything's going to be held within those parking lots and then pushed to the north. Thank you. And Tammy, one question for you. The median there on 36th Street, there already is a break uh, there. There's not a traffic signal, but there is a break to be able to go out of there and turn left or, no, or, or right. And that part will not be affected by the new roadway re, uh, construction that's happening a little bit to the south. That, that, that interchange right there will not change. Correct. Um, one of the questions that came up at Planning Commission was whether or not this would be signalized. Um, probably not likely, just because you've got the signal at the intersection of Blind and Gale on South 36th, and then you've got the signalized intersection, obviously, at 370 and 36, so it doesn't leave a lot of room or a lot of spacing for a signal at Lexington and 36. We anticipate once the 36th Street project is done, traffic will move more efficiently through there. Also, uh, from a traffic engineering perspective, these units, the minimal amount of units being placed in there is not going to be have a huge impact on the traffic that's there now. Um, there would be more of an impact if it were to stay commercial and be commercial development. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, these are gonna be one bedroom and two bedroom units, is that correct? What type of rents are you gonna be collecting or charging or getting for these? I, I actually do not know that one. I can confer with a client and ask. That, that would be great if, if you, I mean, you can do that here and get me an answer or you need to get me an answer later. Uh, I'll, I'll get you an answer later. Thank you. Yep. They'll be higher in a couple of weeks anyway, so the rates. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions or comments while the applicant's here? Thank you. The public hearing, uh, nobody came up. I close that. So the third reading will be July 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. here in the council chambers. Item 12B, ordinance number 4041 to make unlawful and set a penalty for those charged with violation of city ordinance been issued a citation and who fail to appear or refuse to appear in court and give the city attorney an avenue to obtain a warrant for defendants who continuously or repeatedly fail or refuse to appear in court. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4041, an ordinance to amend Article 1, Chapter 20 of the Bellevue Municipal Code by adding a new section 20-15 regarding failure to appear and to provide an effective date. Thank you. I will open up the hearing on 12B, ordinance number 4041. So if there's anyone here in the public that would like to speak, please come forward. Public hearing for ordinance number 4041 is open. Please come forward if there's anyone here. Seeing nobody come forward, I'll close the public hearing. Third reading will be July 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Item 12C, ordinance number 4042, an ordinance to amend chapter seven of the Bellevue Municipal Code pertaining to bicycles. Susan, would you read that ordinance? Ordinance number 4042, an ordinance to amend chapter seven pertaining to bicycles by amending article one, section seven dash two and repealing article one, section 7 1 and section 7 11 and article 2 in its entirety and to provide for the effective date of this ordinance. Okay, I'll now open up the public hearing for ordinance number 4042. If there's anyone here wishing to speak regarding this ordinance, please come forward. 
there anyone here to speak regarding ordinance number 4042? If there is, please come forward. Seeing nobody, I will close the public hearing. Third reading will be July 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Item 13, ordinances for introduction, first reading. 13A, ordinance number 4043, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of highway allocation fund pledge bonds, series 2021, in an amount not to exceed $6 million. And we also have a request to waive um, the rule requiring three readings, hold a public hearing, and vote after the public hearing at tonight's meeting as well. Susan, would you read this ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4043, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of Highway Allocation Fund Pledge Bonds, Series 2021 of the City of Bellevue, Nebraska, in the principal amount of not to exceed $6 million for the purpose of paying the cost of certain street improvements and related improvements within the City of Bellevue, Nebraska, prescribing the form of such bonds to be issued and authorizing officers of the city to approve certain final terms of the bonds, pledging funds to be received by the city from the State of Nebraska Highway Allocation Fund for the payment of such bonds, providing for the levy of taxes to pay the interest on and principal of such bonds if necessary, and providing for the publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form and related matters. Thank you, and do I have a motion to suspend the rules requiring three readings and to hold public hearing tonight and vote? Councilman Pryster. Thank you, Mayor. In the interest of locking in good low interest rates for the public, I will motion to waive the rule requiring three readings, hold a public hearing and vote after the public hearing at this meeting. I'll second that. Motion by Preister, second by Welch. To suspend the rules, any comments or discussion or questions on that? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Okay, I will now open the public hearing for ordinance number 4043. Is there anyone in the audience to speak regarding ordinance number 4043? Please come forward if there's anyone in the audience. Seeing nobody, I'll close the public hearing. And do I have a motion to Approve ordinance number 4043. Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I will move to approve ordinance number 4040. 43. 40, 4043. Four, my screen is a 4043. I'll second that. Motion by Preister, seconded by Welch. Comments or questions? And Riches and Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to commend the uh, public Works Department as well as the Finance Department. I think they're managing our streets very well. Uh, they're taken care of. We're proactive. This bonding will allow us to keep doing that, and we're doing it at very low interest rates. Had we put some of these projects off longer, they may end up costing more because of the cost of doing the work. So the offset from the low interest rates, I think, is a very good use of taxpayer money, even though I don't normally like to bond things. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion, comments, questions? All right, motion by Preister, seconded by Welch to approve number four, ordinance number 4043. Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 13B, ordinance number 4044, request to rezone lots one through five, Svenson Acres, replat one, being a replat of lot one, Svenson Acres, and a platting of tax lots D9H, D9D, D9C, and D9B, all located in the northwest quarter 
of Section 16, Township 14 North, Range 13 East of the 6th PM, Sarpy County, Nebraska from BGH and BNH to BGH and RG50 for the purpose of existing commercial and residential development. Applicant is Svenson Real Estate, LLC. General location is 3501 Harrison Street. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4044, an ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the City of Bellevue, Nebraska, as provided for by Article 3 of Ordinance number 3619, by changing the zone classification of land located at or about 3501 Harrison Street, more particularly described in Section 1 of the ordinance and to provide an effective date. Thank you. The second reading and public hearing will be held July 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. here in the council chambers. Item 13C, ordinance number 4045, request to rezone lot one, Redwood 25 being a platting of tax lot 4F located in the northwest quarter of section 27, township 14 north, range 13 east of the 6th p.m., Sarpy County, Nebraska, from AG to RG dash 28 dash PS for the purpose of multifamily residential development. Applicant is Redwood USA LLC. General location is South 25th Street and Cornhusker Road. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Yes. An ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the city of Bellevue, Nebraska is provided for by Article 3 of Ordinance Number 3619 by changing the zone classification of land located at or about South 25th Street and Cornhusker Road, more particularly described in Section 1 of the ordinance, and to provide an effective date. Thank you. The second reading and public hearing will be July 20th, 2021 at 6 p.m. here in the Council Chambers. Item 14, public hearing on matters other than ordinances. 14A, recommendation to approve the event application for Kevin Power to host his seventh annual pri private charity event to raise donations for the Bellevue Food Pantry at his home, 108 Meadow Fox Court on Saturday, July 24th, 2021 from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. with live music and to waive the $50 event fee. And I will open uh, 14A up for public hearing. If there's anyone here to speak for or against, please come forward. This is uh, for or against the event application, 14A. Public hearing is open. Please come forward. Seeing nobody, I will close the public hearing. And do I have a motion? Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve 14A. Second. Motion by Cook, seconded by Stenson. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 14B, recommendation supporting a request to name Everett Parks Tennis Court as Bill Batchelor Tennis Courts. And I will open 14B up for public hearing. If there's anyone here to speak regarding the naming of the tennis courts, please come forward. Good evening. I've spoken to you before about this and I just think it's something that is vital not only to the individual and his family, but I really think it speaks volumes for this community. Uh, this is an Air Force retiree. Uh, this is a gentleman who could have easily gone into any other civil service or any other career field, but he chose to serve our community and he chose to serve it in a way to where it could be a faith-based perspective, but also uh, enhance the lives physically of a great many people. Uh, what's interesting about this guy, as you've heard before, is that um, at, the, at the announcement of his death, there were people that nobody knew actually took tennis lessons from him. And upon hearing that, these were people that were in their later teens, early 20s, who actually cried because he was so impactful to them. This is really for them. This isn't about Bill. Bill has gone beyond and, and I hope and pray he's in greater places, but this is for them. This is to let them know that the person they encountered in their life at a very young age mattered. And it has to matter to them. And I would ask you to make sure it matters to us. So please approve it this evening. 
Thank, Thank you. you, Tom. Would you state your name and address for the record, please? I'm so please? sorry. I am uh, Tom Deal, the owner of uh, Chick-fil-A, uh, Air Force retired colonel, and I live at 11712 Trumbull Loop West here in Bellevue. Thank you. My pleasure. Public hearing is still open. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing nobody come forward, I'll close the public hearing and I'll entertain a motion. Councilman Stenson. Make a motion. We approve 14B. I'll second that. Motion by Stenson, second by Welch. Any further discussion? Just the big guy must have taken him upstairs because he needed tennis. That's all I can say. There you go. God bless you. No other discussion? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carried. Thanks for your leadership on that, Tom. My pleasure, and I, I gotta tell you, I can't wait to tell his family. We've waited a while for this, and this is amazing. But also go on the record that if there's any costs incurred with signage, I'm paying for it personally. That's how much this means to me. So thank you all, and God bless. Thank you. Okay, so we're at 15 resolutions. Uh, 15A was moved. We'll move to 15B, resolution number 2021-21, a resolution adopting the 2021 Papio Missouri River Natural Resource District Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan update. So I have a motion. Councilwoman Walsh. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution number 2021-21. Second. Motion by Welch, second by Cook. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 15C, resolution number 2021-22, approval for Advanced Gaming Technologies, Inc. to continue to operate satellite Kino location at the business operated by A&K Sun Valley, LLC, doing business as Sundowner Bar located at 5031 Harrison Street in Bellevue, Sarpy County, Nebraska, and authorizes the mayor to sign. Councilman Stenson? Make a motion we approve 15C. Second. Okay. Motion by Stenson, second by McCaw. Any discussions or comments? Councilman Preister? Thank you, Mayor. I think we had the applicant just about to say uh, something. No, that's, and that's maybe he wants to. If you had any questions, it's, it's changing hands. Uh, uh, it, there'll, there'll be a new owner. That, that's all this is, is transferring the license. So. I yeah. Just want to commend the current owner. I think it's been run well. I know you have a lot of dart tournaments and other activities oh, yeah. currently there, and I get no complaints, and yeah. it's a well-run establishment, so yeah. I appreciate that. Keith's our longest tenured Kino satellite owner. Hmm. He, he signed up in 99, and that's the first time it's changed hands. He's been there a long time, and, and you're right. He's a good operator, so it's Kim that that's taken it over. She's managed a couple of the Garrison's bars. I think I think she'll do fine there too. So I, I think it'll go good. Good. Thank They'd you. They'd like very to much. keep the Kino, and we'd like them to keep it. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> okay. Th thanks for all you do for the city. Any other comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carried. Thank you. Item 15D, resolution number 2021-23, a resolution approving and authorizing the mayor to sign the resolution and LPA program agreement, federal aid funds, BM2107, with the state of Nebraska Department of Transportation for the 2021 Bellevue Major Street resurfacing. Any comments or questions? Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion. We approve resolution number 2021-23. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch. Now it's time for comments or questions. Councilman Preister. 
Thank you, Mayor. I just can somebody tell me what the seven segments that are going to be surfaced are? I looked, but I didn't see them in the resolution. May I probably missed them? Put put uh, Doug on the spot. I don't know if you have that information with you tonight or not, Doug. The I got it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Cook's got it. I don't have the seven segments with me here this evening. Um, it's I, under, go ahead. Here's what I wrote down for notes. Cape Heart Road um, from Fort Crook to about 28th Avenue. West Chandler Road. Now this is where it gets a little weird. I think it there's a high metal, metal lane. So it's like about 36 to 40 seconds. Does that make sense, Don? Yes. Okay. Jewel Road, Harvell to Bellevue Boulevard South. Golden Hills. And about 370 to go to 36th Street, 25th Street, Harrison to MOSE Moose Avenue, 42nd Street, Harrison to Giles, Avery Road, Fort Crook Road to Bellevue Boulevard North. And three of those are in Ward 5, so I appreciate that especially. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Any comments or questions? All right, please vote. All voting yes, motion carried. Thank you, item 15E, resolution number 2021-24. Approve and authorize the mayor to sign agreement with Beardmore Hyundai to share in costs for certain improvements at the intersection near 1203 Fort Crook Road North. Councilwoman Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that we approve resolution 2021-24. Second. Motion by Welch, second by Stenson. Comments or questions? Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I'm, I'm just, I don't oppose this, but we now have control of Fort Crook Road, and I don't know when we're going to modify it or do something, and I just wouldn't want to do something now that we may redo or not be usable in the future. So if I could just uh, maybe get the city administrator, Jim Ristow, to comment and let us know how that's shaping up, or somebody. Oh, they don't trust Mark and I with a live mic. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so I think in the next week we have a, um, a Fort Crook Road committee that's formed to start the process. So there is a task force that will start working on this. Prior to the discussion with Beardmore and after with Beardmore on this particular one, HDR was the original uh, Fort Crook Road um, development company that did all the engineering and all the, you remember the documents, like a 200 page document. So we passed this by Doug Basson from HDR too, and it fits in with the long range plan as to what we're, we're looking to do all along Fort Crook Road. So we've had those discussions, so we're not doing something that'll upset the apple cart. So within the upcoming weeks, you'll start to see some activity as what we do with the rest of Fort Crook Road, get the battle plan moving forward. But this doesn't have any impact on in the short term. This is fixing something that actually fits in what we should be doing on that particular median. And that's a good thing. And I can assume that we're working and looking to the future, but your yes. comments help that. Yep. And please keep us informed, all the council, so yep. we have more updated information because people do ask us. You got it. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on 15E? Motion by Walsh, second by Stenson. Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you. Item 16, current business, uh, 16A was moved, 16B, approval of the redevelopment agreement and redevelopment promissory note, allowing up to $435,000 plus accrued interest to offset TIF eligible expenses for the Ivy Properties, Inc., 2009 Franklin Street. Looking for a motion. Councilman Stenson. Make a motion we approve 16B. 
Motion by Stinson, seconded by Burns. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you. Item 16C, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the proposal with Hymas Corporation for the Bellevue Boulevard South Emergency Storm Sewer Replacement in the amount of $150,938 plus a 10% contingency in the amount of $15,093.80 for a total project cost not to exceed $166,000. $31.80. We have a motion. Councilman Burns? I move that we approve item 16C. Second. Motion by Burns, seconded by Preister. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 16D, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the supplemental agreement with Alfred Benish and Company for the 2021 resurfacing project, Bellevue AC funding in an amount not to exceed $53,543.60. We have a motion, Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor, I'll make motion to approve item 16D. Motion by Cook, seconded by Burns. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you. Item 16E, approve and authorize the contract amend, amendment for Ultimate Kronos Group, uh, Ultimate Software Group for the city's payroll for HRIS system. Do I have a motion? Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve item 16E. I'll second that. Motion by Preister, second by Welch. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you, item 16F, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the first addendum with Waste Connections of Nebraska, Inc. doing business as Papillion Sanitation, replacing the fees as outlined in Article 8 of the Franchise Agreement and shall be in effect until April 30th, 2023. Do I have a motion? Councilman Burns? I move that we approve item 16F. Second. Motion by Burns, second by McCaw. Any comments or questions? Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, is there somebody here from Papillion Sanitation? I don't see anyone. I have some questions for them. Uh, two things that uh, I am interested in. One, we're asking that we change the provider for recycling. And I also see that we have no public recycling beyond glass currently, and I'd sure like to see us be able to provide at least one public recycling container. And so I was hoping to see where we might be able to work that into this contract. Uh, I think we've got an exceptional contract. I was here when we did the original one. Papillion Sanitation has done a great job in carrying it out. I think we've increased our recycling, but I don't know exactly the numbers. Or I, I would in the future like to have Epiphany come and give us uh, some good background information and some updates after it's been three years now. Uh, and I don't see her here either. Uh, I maybe somebody else can answer some of the questions on it, but has anybody been to Nebraska land to see it? And that's part of my main issue. 
Susan, could you pull up the picture of Nebraska land for us? I, I happen to know the location because I grew up not too far from there and it's in a residential area. It's a very small site. It's under an acre. It actually looks like what First Star Recycling looked like when they first opened their operation, which coincidentally was only a block away from the house I lived in at that time. Mm -hmm. So I have some firsthand experience with, with them. And I, I went out today there, thank you very much, just to get a picture and you can see the sign on the left-hand side that says Nebraska Land. If you look at that, the building is on the left and that behind that building is the end of the property. On the right-hand side, you see the neighboring building and that's the extent of the property on that side. So the unloading is right what you're looking at. And if you see, you can tell that the covered area is very limited. So once that garage covered area, the trucks have backed in like that one unloading, once they've backed in, there's very limited space to keep the recycling covered for rain or wind or other things. That's part of my concern. The city of Omaha did not approve this site in their contract. And I think it's partially because the space is very limited and it's in a residential area. Where I'm standing taking this picture is all residents behind me. It's all residential area. And there's also a connection for the Papio Creek Trail. So there's a lot of bicyclists and there are concerns from some of the neighbors about the litter and things blowing out because it's not contained. So I'm not putting down Nebraska land, but this is a site that's very limited in a residential area that we're gonna give approval to, to take more recycling then, in my view, I'm convinced they can handle. And I don't know that anybody is here tonight to answer some questions, at least from their perspective. But you can see, essentially, right there is the site. And I don't know, uh, maybe Mr. Clark could tell us how many additional trucks will be going to the site if we approve this. I, I can't specifically answer how many trucks will be uh, going to this site. Uh, I can only say that our contract is with uh, Papillion Sanitation, right. and they uh, farm this out to uh, one other organization, and they wanted to add Nebraska land to the list of people that could do the recycling for them. Right. But in approving it, that I just want to make sure everybody sees what we're approving to allow them to do that. Correct. If if you vote yes on this, it would be uh, Nebraska land would be receiving some of the recycles, at least some of the recyclables coming from the city of Bellevue. And kudos to the city of Bellevue. I think we are the most by percentage recycling city in the state. And, and I thank you and Epiphany and Wastewater because I serve on the map a solid waste task force. And I talk to people from around the state and in the metro area through MAPA and Council Bluffs. And we are the premier. We have the best yard waste, the most efficient. We have the best recycling, the most efficient and effective. And we have the best trash collection with the fewest complaints. Kudos. My concern, I want to make sure it stays that way. And I think you do, and I, I think all of us do. So that's why I want to make sure before we allow this and additional problems for those neighbors, some of whom I still know, and they can't handle it. And then 
it has to be taken back. We've already approved it. So I just want to make sure we do it right. I, I would agree with that. Um, the, the one thing I would say is I don't believe this singles out Nebraska land as the only person processing the recycling for papillion sanitation. So if it did not work out, I think they would simply shift gears and go back to the current provider. Um, that's my understanding at this time, Mr. Preister. And, and I would expect that they would do that too. And my understanding is that uh, Omaha did approve them and that they weren't able to fully comply and that some of that recycling then was taken to First Star Recycling. So I, I think before making a decision and allowing it, you can see the size and then we add, I don't know how many trucks. I, I would just like to get some more information and I'll ask you, they may be rhetorical questions, but I wrote down just a few that I would have asked Papillion Sanitation because I, I noticed in their letter and their information, they pointed out how much they were paying for First Star Recycling and that amount for the fees, but there's nothing in there of what's going to be charged for the Nebraska land. I, I don't know if you can speak for them or if you know that, I think we need a number to compare the two if we're going to be voting on this. I, that number has not been shared with me. Um, once again, it's a private contract between them and Nebraska Land and their recycling organizations. Uh, a disclosure issue would be with them, I believe. And, and I don't expect you can speak for no. them, so yep. I, I understand that. But I, I would like the council to have that, if not tonight, at some point, so we know the comparables. I think that's pretty important. Uh, I would expect that if these were approved, there would be some cost savings to them that could be sizable. And I understand they're recouping some of what they've lost in the past. However, there are going to be savings in the future going forward for several years more on the contract. I'd just like to know what we might be able to get in return for that. Maybe we could get a recycling container for public waste recycling or partial, or if, if they're gonna be benefiting and we're helping them, I wonder if they have a way to help us too to get some additional recycling. So that's an additional question. Uh, and I would really like to know our loads and the verifying of how many loads we're actually sending to be recycled. So I, if they could provide us the some verification of how much each month through the, the contract, I, I know they keep records, they have all the, the tonnage, they have all those documents. So if uh, they could provide that and What's the other question? Oh, what was the criteria that they used? They selected Nebraska land as this alternative or wanting to have it as an option. And was it just bottom line dollars or was there some other criteria if you even know? I, I would like to know. No, I'm, I'm unaware of the criteria they used. Um, once again, private contract, uh, Cost is usually a driver. I would I would assume cost is a driver, um, but I can't confirm uh, that information for sure. Okay. And you probably wouldn't be able to answer then how Nebraska land processes the orange energy bag. That's one of the key components of our new contract and that orange energy bag allows people like me who have absolutely zero trash, thanks to that bag, any scrap or waste, plastic or other things, I can put in the orange energy bag, I put it in my recycling container, and instead of that going to the trash, 
it's used and and uh, I would like to find out more about where that goes if I could do that but uh, do you have any idea or can you find out where and what happens to the orange energy bag at Nebraska land please and I'll, I, I, I can, can ask that this, question I can write this up and send okay. it to you later and I'm sorry to get in your lane and, and ask you questions you don't have answers to. I expected with such an important contract that they would have at least had a representative here. And with the holiday, things kind of backed up on me too, so I probably could have asked sooner. It's okay. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> and I appreciate that you are, Doug. Thank you. Uh, and do I... Oh, I'll just leave the rhetorical questions with you too about uh, alternatives or ways we might be able to find to have a public recycling container. The glass has been working good. The memo that I thank Epiphany sent me today said one complete site with glass, and I'm quoting, with glass and recycling, and there's an and in there, can cost up to 20000 annually. So since we're doing it currently, I'm assuming that's the glass, that's about 10,000. So that would be about another 10,000 that would be what we would be doing, according to what I got. 20,000 is the number I remember having discussions with Epiphany on in the past for a recycling container. So I, I believe that's correct. Okay. All right. And I have some questions for the alternative of First Star Fiber, but I think I have to, and I only have four, but if I do that, I think I have to get support and have uh, open the public hearing to get him to be able to speak. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. We have to do a motion. Okay. Anybody have any objection if I do that? Well, you can make a motion. Then I'll find out. <laughs> okay. I I would like to make a motion that we open up the public hearing. I'll second it. Motion by Preister, second by Cook to open up item 16F for public hearing. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you. Item 16F is open for public hearing now. And I see Dale Goebbels is hiding out in the back there. If he would come up or if he's got somebody else with him who I don't recognize. Sure. And state your name and address and who you represent, please. Sure. Uh, I'm Dale Goebbels. Uh, I'm the CEO of First Star Fiber and my address is 1211 Cork Drive uh, Papillion. And with me is Danielle Easdale. She is the uh, Director of Sales and Marketing at First Star Fiber. And Joe Norris, uh, who should probably give his address too, he's a controller and he lives in Bellevue. <laughs> so. Joe Norris, 2202 Lucille Drive, Green Meadow Subdivision. Danielle Easdale, 5924 South 175th uh, Circle, Omaha. Um, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, we are and have been the processor for Bellevue's recyclables. Uh, even before Bellevue elected to go to carts, which uh, definitely has been a, a real boon for recycling and as a uh, council member of Pricer said, uh, Bellevue is a leader in this state. I've been involved in recycling in Nebraska since the uh, early 1980s, and there's no city that has achieved as much in recycling as Bellevue, and you're all to be commended for that. We definitely would like to continue to be your sole processor going forward. Um, recycling is a very positive thing for the state as well as the, the nation and for that matter, the world. And the way Bellevue has gone about it 
has been very commendable because it gives people the convenience of how to recycle and Papillion Sanitation has done a very good job providing that convenience of getting it collected. From that point on though, it gets more complicated. It takes a lot of uh, very high tech equipment to take that commingled material and turn it into about uh, over a dozen or over a half a dozen commodities that are used in Norfolk. They're making cellulose insulation there. They're using it in Kearney to make uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, animal uh, uh, hog confinement, hog confinement uh, panels. Each one of the end markets, and we send material from Bellevue all over the country. We try to keep as much of it in Nebraska as possible because that keeps the freight down. But each one of those end markets require that the purity of what we send them has to be at least 98% of whatever that material is. If it's cardboard, if it's newspaper, whatever. And to do that, to do it right, it requires a larger facility than uh, just a couple of acres. Our site is a, uh, better than a 20 acre site. Our building is uh, uh, total for our recycling is uh, about 200 square, 200,000 square feet. And we employ uh, 110 people. And actually, if anyone's looking for a job, we're looking for another 20 <laughs> minimum. But uh, I think we're all in that boat right now. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you have for us, uh, Councilman Preister. Thank you very much, Neil. And I appreciate you and your, your staff being here. The, the first one I would ask is we've identified that there's about an average cost increase of roughly 80 cents per resident. In my case, I have the smallest cart. It'll only be 40 cents increase. That's pretty good after all this time and for the value that we get. But for that 40 or 80 cents or what somebody pays or potentially a little more, what do they get for that? What, what value does Bellevue get from your recycling? I appreciate that. I'll just start by saying the, the, the biggest value you get is what, what the city has expected for the value that you have set. You're getting that from us. Um, we pride ourselves in being transparent uh, and giving you all the information that you could ever want about how your materials are being collected and processed so that they are going to end markets. That's one of the first things. And perhaps, and I'll let Danielle speak to this because this is right up her alley, we're constantly looking for other materials that we can recycle so that what you do have residents set out, they have the assurances that it's actually going somewhere where it's getting recycled properly. And before she does, can you comment on that? Do you have some proof or verification or something? Because I had asked that earlier. For Sure. Uh, all the trucks that uh, come to us are scaled as they're coming in, and there's a scale ticket that goes out with each uh, driver uh, that brings material to us. Uh, we also maintain for our records, and we're happy to share, it would be the aggregate of everything we get. Um, we keep tracks of what we're disposing of as well as what we're recycling so that we know that we're keeping our disposal rates. And unfortunately, we know that not everything that we get is going to be recyclable because uh, we call these wishful recyclers. People who think, gee, I wish this could be recycled. Maybe they'll figure it out. Um, we've been at about 7% of the trash or of the material that we received has to go to the landfill. 
We can also, though, specifically for Bellevue, um, we can do material audits, which um, means that when a load comes in, and we just did this for the city of Omaha, the results aren't back yet. They use an outside consultant. But for one full week, they took samples of everything that came in from the city of Omaha, and then they went very methodically through it to see how, what level of, of contamination was in there. That's something that we can do as well. We've done it on an aggregate. Again, I can't say that we knew it was a, uh, a Bellevue truck, but we can do that as well. Okay, thank you. You answered one and a half questions. <laughs> Sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, Please that's, continue. That's fine. Um, is, could, could you repeat that, the, the question that you were, you were asking just so I can get back on track with where we were? Since I took you off. The, the initial Sorry, you question. Me. I got thrown off course. There. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Dale can uh, do it too. But the uh, increase in the cost is going up. And what are we getting for value from that increase? And with this contract, uh, Papillion Sanitation, I think, rightfully asked for a 3.3% increase. So it's going to raise our, our fees to people on average about 80 cents. As I said, in my case, only 40 cents a month will I pay more, which to me is pretty low considering the service we get. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you, what do we get for that regular service or potentially enhanced service? I think one is of the... I Thank you very much uh, for, for repeating that for me. I think one of the things that I'd like to say is that, again, with Dale commending Bellevue and, and the contract so far, is that First Star Fiber shares a lot of those, you know, shares those, those values. And we invest in recycling. We go above and beyond to capture everything that we absolutely can. We're out in the community on a regular basis. We, you know, we sponsored the, the uh, we were the, one of the lead sponsors for the Sarpa County Earth Day. We're out there talking in the schools. We're out there um, working with businesses to, to help businesses uh, recover their uh, uh, wasted goods as well. And uh, we're not just sitting back and, and you know, doing you know what comes in we're actually out in the community helping the community get to know exactly what they can recycle get them to see what goes on behind the scenes like Dale was saying with the transparency um, offering tours things like that so that the community can really see what they are getting for their money and how much we are actually going above and beyond and looking at those commodities looking what we can pull out of the waste stream and what we can pull out of the landfill okay thank you if I can, Don, you spoke to the energy bag. All yes, right. please. That's we one, are, one of my questions. And you're asking, you know, you're asking, well, what is the investment the city is making buying you personally and others? All right. We are in process of installing a new technology to pull film from the flow that's coming in. You know, the wrapping that's on the water we buy or the pop we buy the wrapping around all the packages that people send in, the Christmas present wrappings, all of that film. Our trash or our residuals at 7% is measured based on the weight of the material that comes into our place. If we could do that on volume, most of that would end up being these films and these plastics that right now we can't do anything with very well, all right? We have to get them separated and pulled out, all right? We, the citizens of Bellevue, since I am from Bellevue, are investing in this new technology so that I, when I put that into that bag or it's inadvertently put in along with the cardboard wrapping, I was too lazy to pull the cardboard out and put the wrapping someplace else, all right? That material now can be sucked up will be sucked up, hopefully starting this fall, and turned into the film that we will, with other technologies that we're putting in, be able to turn that into something salable today and keep that out of the landfill, okay? So if you're looking for a great investment, what you're getting for that little bit of money, as you've indicated to you personally, it's a tremendous investment. And if we can be successful in that 
in the city of Omaha, city of Bellevue with that technology that will be taken around the United States, okay? This is something very relatively new that we're attempting to do. And we've gotten some backing from a variety of different sources to help us do this activity. So is that separate from the orange energy bag or is that? It is separate from the energy bag. Okay. It's an enhancement on top of that. So if you look at the flow, when you looked at even the material in your picture from Nebraska land, you can identify the film that's all in there. Plastic to, bag. The plastic bags, your grocery sacks and that, the demons in some respects to many. But they pull that out. That's going into their residual and right to the garbage and trash today. We fight that same battle. We'll have four big 40 yarders, mainly filled with that film that today we can't recycle. All right, we want to change that. The city of Bellevue, by sending its recycling to First Star Fiber over the last decade, all right, has essentially invested in First Star Fiber, all right, to allow Nebraska land to slip in, nothing against them. We'll be turning our backs on the investment we've made for the last decade and not going on with that. When you come to First Star Fiber and look at this building and look what you've invested in, which I encourage you to all to do, to say, wait a minute, we built this. And you did. There's no two ways about that, along with the rest of the citizens. First Star Fiber was built to serve this area. So you should be proud of your investment, and I encourage you to continue to do that. I am, and did I hear that as an open invitation for any council members or anybody, the mayor or anybody who wants to come out to get a tour? Very much so. We, as Danielle said, we encourage and we love to have tours because people come in and they're always fascinated. You do this with that, and uh, they're just blown away by it. And I, I think uh, the standing invitation, whenever uh, it's convenient for you. I've been there on Saturday mornings and Sundays, when evenings, whenever uh, it's of uh, convenience to you, we'll be there to show you what we're doing. And over the next, as uh, Joe was mentioning over the next six months, we're putting in capability to take that plastic material and we'll be doing even more tours because we'll be the first and only company in Nebraska that's turning that plastic into plastic lumber and other types of products that, uh, you know, go right back into our economy here locally. So, and that's again, important to yeah. me because I want to look long term and I like that First Star Recycling looks long term and is investing money back into the community and is out in the community and is enhancing and diverting more and more from what would end up in our landfill. And so to go with a company, I think if... I look at it correctly, and I've been in your facility. I think the entire lot and building and everything of Nebraska land would fit inside your one building. It would, yes. And you do everything inside. It's all kept from blowing out all over. The trucks have all kinds of room to move in and out, never creating a problem for neighbors or residents or litter or any of those things because it's all contained. It's dumped by the truck inside completely in a big warehouse. And it's so self-contained that there are no issues with it. And I know if the cardboard gets wet, it can't be sold for as much money. If other contamination happens to the paper, it doesn't bring as good a return. So I, I just, really feel good about your process, but you're looking to the future. And that's why it concerns me that we might allow a lot of that to go to a company who uh, has not been involved in the community to what I have seen. They were set up to deal with a segment of the market, but not this big segment. And that's my concern. Are, are you looking for a place to do a process with the orange energy bag, or if you kind of got those things worked out, 
because I think I have some site and some land in Bellevue that we might <laughs> talk to you about. Um, <clears throat> we are trying to squeeze it into our building there just okay. to keep our costs down. But appreciate the offer and uh, our offer to hire people still stands too. Uh, <laughs> All right. If well, you're I looking for something to do on weekends or <laughs> just joking. Yeah, I'm always looking for something new to do. <laughs> I, I, I think that's my four questions, and I appreciate everybody's indulgence because we never talk about trash or recycling. It's out of sight, out of mind. Nobody is interested in it. Every three, four years, we may have a brief discussion, but this is a time, I think, to celebrate that we've done good things. Your company is a testament to that. Our public works is a testament to creating the contract initially to go with the lidded carts, which Omaha finally modeled after and other people are. I think we've set a high bar, we're doing an excellent job, and I just don't wanna see that go backwards. And especially in Bellevue, we currently have been dealing with floods, with drought, with tornadoes, and with the pandemic, all of which are natural disasters. The earth, and the changes are taking place. And I just so strongly believe we've got to be proactive. We can prevent some of these things or the frequency or the intensity by our human action. And I, for 40 cents, I'm, I don't even put trash out. I don't put yard waste out. I'm more than happy to pay that pittance so we have good service. So anyway... I'm preaching and I, I don't apologize, but I'll stop for now. With that, Councilwoman Welch. Okay, so I'm a little confused. Um, and maybe you guys can answer and maybe Doug Clark can answer. So our contract is with Papillion Sanitation. Is that correct, Doug? Kathy, that's correct. Right. Okay, thank you. And do we have a agreement or a contract with First Star Fiber? No, we do not. Okay, and have you made the presentation to Papillion Sanitation to get on their radar, so to speak? We are currently, our contract is through Papillion Sanitation. They are the hauler, and so they pick up the material, and then they process it currently through First Star. So they already have that working relationship together. So what we're asking to do, and I have a page and a half email from Epiphany, uh, what we're asking to do is to approve Nebraska land as an additional site. So it's not getting rid of First Star and their services through Papillion. It's approving Nebraska land so that if Papillion Sanitation wants to recycle at Nebraska land, they're an approved site and they can do that. Um, if that makes sense. But we don't have a contract with Nebraska Land and we don't have a contract with First Star directly. Ours is with Papillion Sanitation. Correct. Right. And they're the one that did the analysis to come up with the price increases and utilizing Nebraska Land, my understanding, utilizing them as a secondary site in addition to First Star is what keeps the costs, although they're going up, keeps the costs minimal. Down. Yeah. Okay. And so you came tonight to be able to present to us as to what it's all about in the background, so to speak. That is correct. Okay. So Doug, if as you're going through Mr. Preister's questions, um, if you wouldn't if you wouldn't mind adding another question as to who else is using this um, the Nebraska land. Nebraska land. Who who else is using them as well? If you don't mind, because I'm sure Papain Sanitation just didn't close their eyes and throw a dart and find somebody. So there's had to, there had to be credentials or reasons or something. And I'm not questioning what they've done. It's just a little bit of background, if you don't mind. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I got a few questions. Don's got a few of them answered, but if that was four questions. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> My four questions will be a lot quicker, but wh where are you located? We're at 103rd and I Street. We're about straight west of um, Kellogg's and Okay, on I have been at your location. Huh. And I think maybe Danielle or uh, Mr. Pricer said you unload trucks inside. 
and you said you're 200,000 square feet. Give me like a dimension. It's uh, building 300 feet by 400 feet, or what does that figure out to? We we're at 353,000 square feet in total in that building, the old Formida Distribution Center. Okay, do you process in a building that's 200,000 square feet? We rent out that portion. Okay, we but everything's done inside. Everything is uh, done yes. inside. Yes. Um, we are we are storing some of the plastics outside presently. Okay. All right. You will see stacks of plastics out there. Pit processed. So, um, so two hundred feet by two hundred feet by a thousand feet, roughly. I mean, um, two hundred thousand. Where, where is um, what's this other place called? Nebraska land. Where is that located? It's on Thirty Ninth and D Street. Go 40 seconds, and then when you get to D Street, go east through the residential area. Okay, I think I know about where that's at. Just down the, from McDonald's on 42nd Street there, just before you get the interstate. Okay. The South Omaha Trail head is right there on 42nd, and it goes past that and the trail, and then down to Carpenter Paper, and right behind Carpenter Paper. Okay. I, I guess... And, and Breeze mentioned this, we're contracting with Papillion Sanitation, then they step off and contract with other people. I, I look at Nebraska land, and you're saying across the street is residential homes. I, you know, I'm all for businesses to try to start, uh, start up and get bigger and bigger and bigger. But let's, let's be realistic here, everybody in this room. If that was across the street from your house, it looks like a couple lean-to buildings that I could probably pull in four or five cars. I don't know. How do you separate the trash? I mean, and what bothers me is the memo we got from Papillion Sanitation talks about the increase with First Star, and then it talks about, but by the concern about the increase, it talks about 2019, the price of First Star jumped. I'm not going to say numbers. And there's we're trying to, rec in order to recoup some of the increase, et cetera, et cetera, to me, it's saying, let's take a look at Nebraska land. And for me, it throws up red flags. Because I think you're going to find that maybe there's a less price and where a lot more of our stuff will go to. And I, I, I don't think that facility is an appropriate facility for the amount of trash that we would send them. So, I, I, mean, I mean, Epiphany's not here. Someone from Papillion Sanitation, Nebraska land's not here. I mean, we're really, st this is a, pretty big three-year contract it's got to be worth millions I, I think councilman cook sorry could I just jump in really quick um I, I think epiphany is not here we told her that she didn't need to come because she did send an email answering a lot of questions today um but Doug Clark has a lot of questions he was asked by Mr. Preister um I think the best course of action if you don't want to vote on it or if the vote is going to be no um, is to do a motion to table this until J July 20th, get gonna... those questions answered, maybe have a meeting with Papillion Sanitation, and then move forward on July 20th. And that's where I was trying to go with this. Because, listen, I'm not going to put down a small business um, that's trying to put a footprint in, in this arena, which we all want to see happen. But my fear is, and, and Doug, this would be a question, or my concern is, there's reference to an increase at first star, and it's going back to 2019. And then it throws in Nebraska land and says, well, your rates, overall rates will go up 3.3. Is that what it said, Mr. Yeah. Preister? Yeah. So if it just went all to first star, what would our rates go up? Um, I, to me, and again, what I just saw, what the picture of yours, to me, that's like, Let's go pick up some recyclables at a business or at a apartment complex and go through it and try to get through it. To me, where you're talking Omaha trucks, Bellevue trucks, we're 60,000 people. I mean, I don't know how many trucks of recyclables we take. I don't know if it's five or 25, but it just seems... Well, that goes to have to give us a chance to look at it. Because the other thing is, do they have another location that we're not aware of? I mean, again, our sure. contract is with Papillion. So we're going to them. If this is the backfill story, I guess we could peel that onion back and look at that. Yeah. If that's if that's what all we get, maybe there's a different discussion. But or is this even just an overflow of what 
But we're not being told they're too busy and can't take it. Correct. And do, doing it outside of what we just saw, what does that attract, possibly? Little four-feet creatures? With long tails? And homes. I, I mean, I'm not trying to be negative because I know there's some industrial there. I, I'm not trying to be negative. This is not putting Nebraska land down. But let's we just really, need more information. Yeah, and, and if, if, if they can't handle it, and it's got to step down to somebody, that's different. Now, if you come back to me and say, to take everything here, the price is, increases way up to here, then we may say that we want to really pass that on, that type of a price increase. But we're talking some numbers in this memo that go back to 2019 that I don't know where they're at today. I've been at that facility. I mean, and be honest with you, I really didn't know what was going on in there until I got in that building. Uh, and I think I could figure out real easy if I drove by this what was going on in that building. Well, I don't think we have any doubt what First Star does. I think the question is, is why does Papillion need an alternate right. to back them up? So what's going on there? That's Since, again, we contract with Papillion, I we're, think, we need to go back and ask. But we got we to be, because it involves trash, recyclables, yard waste, and I think we owe it to people to say, we're going to be good stewards and at least take it to a site that sure. can properly handle it, take care of it, and the neighbors are happy. Yep. A couple quick other things. I, I know that I talked about 30, uh, at our fire station at 36th Street. Do we want to put another recyclable uh, bin there for glass, a second one for additional products, a cost of uh, $20,000 estimated around annually, annually? I think that needs to all be put in to the, the bid that goes through wastewater management people. Yeah, and that, that actually that 20000 is an addition to the glass. So if you recall, we closed two sites that we had mm -hmm. the entire recyclability. Anything can go. <clears throat> American Heroes Park was the finest display, um, a dump site that you would ever see. Because it so wasn't we, just glass. Yeah, we had more trash, and it wasn't a secure site. So we moved strictly. Yeah. The only thing that... We have 97% of our citizens participating in our recycling program. So when it came to, with, with the exception that glass can't be recycled, so that glass, and I couldn't tell you how much glass is being hauled out of there, but the question was, should we add cardboard? Well, and the reason why they wanted to add cardboard is they said that Offit had no place to take their moving boxes. Offit has two large dumpsters. One is on base and one is behind the shop hat in Capehart that recycling is available to. So then it's thrown out that apartments don't recycle cardboard. So, but if, if we've got that high of a percentage of our citizens using their residential for cardboard and other items, do we want to invest $20,000 for another site? And where is that cardboard coming from? And is it really, is that really what our problem is? So we, we held off on that um, large, and it was the Offit thing is that when we found that Offit had two large recycling bins, it was, why would we want to add another one if they were the true problem? So maybe our next question is, what do apartments do for recycling? I don't, I don't know if they participate or not, but it'd be worth looking at as to what, what actions they have. But we could take that all under consideration in this agreement to say that, you know, do we want to put twenty thousand dollars, put another dumpster on thirty sixth? And I'm a little bit opposed because we're using our fire station as a large dumping station. It suddenly becomes highly traffic. It was the only secure site that we felt comfortable enough to put the glass recycling in. So globally, if we're going to do this and add more recycling centers as this, then we need to think through what is our best options there. I, and I don't have the answers for that today. but I agree. When we had it on South 15th Street and up at that park, Banner Park, where it was, I drove by that, that Banner Park. It's horrible. I mean, people were throwing everything there, and then the city had to pick up. And I know people go, uh, go up to the fire station. I know people that go up there don't live in the city, they, but they still want to get rid of glass and some recyclables okay. and stuff. So, you know, what's funny was when this recyclable started, there was a percentage the city got back. I can remember when we, but the city of Bellevue started recyclables so many years ago. I went to school with Mr. Norris here through eighth grade, <clears throat> and he was a pretty tough uh, basketball player, probably a good football player at Gross High, but... Um, uh, and uh, 
when it started, I know that the city was getting back like a five or ten percent. Now I realize costs and everything, but it's funny how we've flipped that to where it's costing us. It's it. <laughs> but it's the right thing to do. So I, that'd be some of my questions. Is I I, I think if this needs to be the the route, and I realize Papillion, and, and I don't, and I'd like to know why there's a need for Nebraska land. To be honest with you, um, is there a process if these guys can't? handle it and they have to look at an alternate site I think it's we contract with them that's their problem you know they can't handle Omaha and ours and stuff like that but I'm sure they're going to tell you us bring as much as you want but then but I would want to know the costs involved on that um, that's just my opinion I didn't, I didn't like that picture that we saw and I just don't think it was the appropriate place for us to take our trash even though um, you know there's a business there to do that I just don't think it's right my two cents. Thank you. Councilwoman Walsh? Oh, just one final word. I was just recently in Mexico and they had purses that were made of recyclable plastic that were selling for $500 a piece. We need to get you connected with those people. <laughs> yeah. If one, oh, go ahead. I'm just thinking as we're looking at approving rates for three years, should we remove that motion and make a motion to delay to next meeting? Well, hold on. One one legal question, I guess. This is an amendment to the contract, so just for legal, is are we within our means of telling Papillion Trash who they can use and not use? I mean, it's on the amendment, but well, the amendment talks about price, but the actual contract itself also does have approved. Um, what's the word for it? Approved disposal sites, um, and so that we would have to look at that. We do need to technically approve that as well um so i think the best option is to table it let's get those questions answered and go from there um and procedurally it looks like burns made the motion original motion and macaw seconded it so after mayor closes the public hearing we can have those motions withdrawn if you want to do that and then there could be a motion to table is one option Okay, so I, I still have public hearing open. So is there anybody else in the audience? Um, Todd, Gifford, does anybody want to talk about trash? No? Talk trash. All right, uh, I'll close the public hearing if there's nobody else. I, I just want to make, and Bree, I apologize. I did not fully catch what you said, but I just want to read a, maybe this is what you said. We're not looking at, this memo here says we are proposing the contract amendment to process recycling at Nebraska land instead of first star fiber. So because with because of the their price increases X percent. So it's not Nebraska land is just an, an alternate. We can take some stuff there when we want to, or if they get bit, whatever. It's these guys are out of the picture, it goes to Nebraska land. That's an, a, a memo. You're reading that off of a memo that was attached. So the actual what you would be approving is not that. You would be approving the addendum, which is the fees, basically, that are going to be assessed. We received an email from Epiphany today um, that specifically says, let me quote it here. Hold on. The approval of a new processing site does not mean that First Star is not an approved site. Approval of a new site is in addition to our existing site. The city intends to continue to hold our contracted hauler accountable, so that would be Papillion Sanitation, accountable for quality deliverables and may utilize the right to remove approved processors at any time. Of course, removal of any approved processor would trigger repricing. So Epiphany is stating that this is an addition to. I, I, I know what you're reading. Okay. Um, but I can tell you uh, today, Epiphany has clarified that it's an addition to. And then we—I would want to know why there's an addition, why why there's a second company involved. Okay, so um, right now we have a motion by Burns, second by McCaw. Do we want to leave that stand, or would you like to withdraw, Councilman Burns? Yeah, if we're gonna table, I'll withdraw my motion. Second. I'll withdraw my second. Okay, now we're open for a new motion. Councilman Price. 
Thank you, Mayor. And thank you all for indulging this conversation. This is a big contract. I think it is important. And we've gotten some information on the whole process. Part of what I think this 3.3 cents raises mine 40 cents. If we get final figures, we might go to 5%. I don't know what that will be. It might add another 25 to 45 cents. So I think it's all gonna come down to economics and do we wanna invest in a company that we're sure of or one that doesn't have as long a track record or a proven ability to deal with it. So I, I think we have some options and the only real issue that I see in, in the contract is a company that I just don't know about. I do wanna support a small business. I think they're trying, but they, don't have as long a range view, and they don't have the experience, and that concerns me. So with that, I will make a motion that we lay this over until the second meeting in July, which is the 20th. Second. Yep. Second? Yep. Okay. So we got a motion by Preister, second by Burns to table. Item 16F until July the July 20th meeting here in the council chambers at 6 p.m. Any comments or questions on that? Okay. Councilwoman Walsh. So, Mr. Clark, will you um, bring that information to the meeting at that point? You'll send us emails. How can we anticipate? Have we'll, we'll, we'll get come? it out to everybody. We'll, okay. we'll distribute it to everybody. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Other questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you. And that will take us to the amended agenda item 16A. Recommendation to approve a separate agreement with the Chamber of Commerce for additional funding for marketing and rebranding services in an amount not to exceed $55,000. Councilman Preister. Mayor, just for clarification, we also, I believe, held 15A over, and it would be next, and I think that was the uh, change to the master fee schedule. Okay. Uh, my motion could have included that, and probably should have, but I didn't know if I needed to make another motion on that because we can't adjust the master fee schedule till we approve the contract because they're related. So I'd ask legal counsel to maybe clarify. Yeah, the amendment as read was to move 16F or 16A and 15A after 16F. So let's deal with 16A first because that came first in the amendment. Right. And then we'll move to 15A which is the master fee schedule, which I will request is tabled to July 20th as well when we get to that. So we'll deal with 16A and then the master fee schedule. Well, 16A, we just dealt with. We just carried that over to the 20th. No, that was 16F. We're going back to 16A, which right. is the Chamber of Commerce agreement. So we're going to do that one well, first. I, my motion was to have both of them before 16A. That's not how it was made. Um, the motion was, we just need to deal with 16A first and then 15A, because that's how it was read. It's not a big deal, we'll get to okay. both of them. Okay, I, I, I see what you're okay. saying now, thank you. So we're on six, S 16A. Okay. Mayor? Yeah. I move that the city council go to closed session at this time for prevention of needless injury to the reputation of individuals involved in this matter. The subject matter to be discussed in closed session is the proposed separate agreement between the City of Bellevue and the Chamber of Commerce regarding additional funding for the marketing and rebranding services. The following individuals will be included during the closed session. Mayor Rusty Hike, Jim Ristill, Mark Albert, Bob Stenson, Paul Cook, Don Preister, Thomas Burns, 
Kathy Welch, Jerry McCaw, Bree Robbins, Annie Matthews, Todd Arney, and Susan Kluthi. Do we need a so second that was on a that? motion, so I need a second. I'll second that. Okay, motion by McCaw, second by Welch. Any comments or questions on going into executive session? Okay, so um, let's vote to go into closed session. All voting yes, motion carries. Okay, thank you. It is uh, 7.40, and we have voted to go into closed session. And the closed session will be in the EOC room. Oh, we're gonna stay Are we going to stay here? Okay. Closed session will remain here. All right, uh, there was a motion by Burns, second by Stenson to come out of closed session. Um, that was at 8.36, do we need time on it? Yeah. Do we have a vote and discussion today? Any discussion on where we're at, 16A? Only on closed session. I'll vote on closed session. So Susan, would you take that vote, coming out of closed session? Mr. Price, there's yours coming up for you. No, I don't have anything. But I vote yes. Okay. There it is now. Okay. There it is. All voting yes, motion carries. <clears throat> okay, so we are on 16A. It has been read. We went into closed session. We are out. Voted to come out, so is there a motion? Councilman Stenson. Make a motion that we table this till the first meeting in August, which is, I'm not sure of the date on that. August 3rd. August 3rd. Motion by Stenson, seconded by Burns to table item 16A until August 3rd at the meeting here in the council chambers, 6 p.m. Or is there any discussion? Councilman Cook. Todd, I just have one question. When do you have a next meeting uh, with the chamber? When is the, I don't know if it's the executive board or how you classify it. The Tomorrow morning, 7.30 a.m. is our executive meeting. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. I'm sure this will be discussed. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, discussion? Motion by Stenson, second by Burns, please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you. Item 15A, resolutions, resolution number 2021-20, amending the master fee schedule to set the solid waste collection, recycling, and yard waste fees for the solid waste contract and to add fees for street alley vacation. We have a motion. Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. In keeping with our previous layover, 
I would move to lay this over to July 20th following uh, any approval of the contract itself. I'll second that. Motion by Preister, second by Welch to table until the July 20th meeting here in the council chambers at 6 p.m. Any comments or questions? Please vote. All voting yes, motion carries. Thank you. It takes us to item 17, administration report. Uh, comments must be limited to items on the current reports. Monthly reports are given to the first, count, uh, first council meeting of each month, and they are attached to your packets. Are there any questions on the reports? Councilman Preister? Yes, I, I'm curious. Uh, I've been wondering about the Sarpy Museum, and I see that's on the agenda, and I would like to get an update. What would you like to know? <laughs> the museum has artifacts inside of it. I'm just kidding you, Don. Are you talking about the termination of our lease agreement? I, I don't understand what's happening with the lease agreement. That's on here. And people in the community have said that we have instructed the Sarpy Museum to move the depot off the land. And I sent a memo several days ago but I haven't gotten a reply yet, so I would rather have talked about this yep. at other places, but it's on the agenda, so I'm asking now. So this has actually been a long-standing issue on the depot, so um, and along with some other historical sites on who's required to maintain them, who owns them, who owns the land, and, and the depot specifically, um, they're on our on city land. The depot is owned by the historical society. The agreement, which is kind of haphazardly slapped together, is that we maintain the properties. Um, so, in one of our inspections last year, we found that the depot was just crammed full of garage sale items. So the depot is not even being used for what it was originally intended. They don't do tours. It's just turned into a warehouse of junk um, for a future garage sale along with that the depot itself some of the decking got into disrepair so the question was is that for us to repair something that's not being used for its original intent is problematic they chose to ignore that discussion um, our guy couldn't even get in and get to the electrical box so because there was so much stuff inside of there it's not historical items it's just stuff that's donated by the community so with that and there's a second piece to this that kind of clouds the water. They're working on relocating that depot anyways on another, on another project. So it's going to go to another site. The developer is the one that just kind of, it's slow rolling it. Um, so we anticipate that that's going to happen anyways. So we don't want to invest any more money into something that's not being used for its intended purpose. They had no interest in doing what the original intent was as to use that for tours. It's not even listed on historical society rules anymore. It's been moved too many times. So it's not even a historical building. So what we've tried to work with the historical society on this, um, do I want to call it a violation of our lease agreement and what the original intent was? Pretty much so. So it's the best thing for us to do is ask them to move that off of our property. It's not strong arming them. Uh, we try to be a good partner with them. There are some other issues with some of the historical buildings that they have ability to raise grant money to do the repairs, but we're their sugar daddy. So as long as we cover the repair bills, um, why should they raise grant money? So the, all the repair bills come back to us. And so we're just trying to get them to do their part. And in this case here with the depot, it's, it's probably the best thing for them to do is to relocate that. It'll also go with the project they're working on. It's just timing wise. And I think we were pretty flexible on the timing. We initially, Bree, was it a 90-day? And we extended it until they could get through their garage sale. I don't remember what our extension was. but Yeah, we met with them and had some conversations. And we're in the works of working out some timing issues to make sure that they have time to do everything because we do want to have a good working relationship. So those are ongoing conversations with them. And they have already planned to move it, and they are in process? Is that what I heard you say? Uh, those details will be finalized through some conversations. They were 
um, piecing together a little bit more information and they were going to get that back to um, our internal group. And once we have that information, um, you know, we can send out an update. I, I don't think we have the, the complete information that we can share right now. No, and there was uh, at some point a memorandum of understanding would be drafted between the historical society and the developer and we're encouraging that to get done sooner than, but we can't expose that at this time because of the working, the inner working details of that with the developer. But it, it raises a question for me of our other historic sites and buildings, the church, the uh, jail. I, I think the history is important to Bellevue and the historical society is volunteers. They're people even probably older than me and they don't have the wherewithal to do a lot of things. So those sites I think are important to the whole community and how and what we do there I think is important. I, I think it's important that the council is kept informed of what can be shared with us because those kind of sites are gonna raise people's questions and they're gonna come to us. And when I don't know anything about it and I can't answer questions, it doesn't make anybody in the city look good. So I would really appreciate keeping us informed of those kind of issues when they're likely to come to us anyway. Generally, we, I mean, th these are things that we do try to keep you abreast on. In this case here, since it was a violation of a lease agreement, we looked at it as an operational issue, um, just trying to resolve something internal. You know, so a lot, of, a lot of times we don't stop to think that all this stuff should be out there funny because it, it is operational and this one we have no desire to pick up the church and ask them to relocate that we're trying to craft some agreements that both of us are partners in the maintenance of it the old sod house um, it was brought to our attention that the roof was leaking and the only reason why it was brought to our attention is because we discovered it, it was damaging the building itself so while it's their building and it's their their directive to maintain or keep an eye on this we find the problems and then we fix them on the city's dime. So we replace the roof, we heat and cool that building. But when we replace the roof, then they were upset that the roof color wasn't the right color. Um, so they want to be involved, but they don't want to be involved. They want to make sure that we pay the cost, but they don't want to partake in that. So we're trying to work this through to where we're better partners as we go forward. It's not to strong arm them. Um, we're not looking to take other issues, other properties, and do things of that nature. It's just to get them to do their part of what they should be doing. The depot is a different a different one where it's literally sitting on ours and it's not achieving the purpose it was intended to. They've just turned it into a storage unit is what they've done, which is unfortunate. But again, the building doesn't have any historical value. I think it's been moved three or four times. Um, so would we're thinking our investment in it isn't achieving the end result. They're not using it for tours or not using it for anything that's being like any artifact stored in there. It's literally, if you look at the pictures, you can see George Foreman grills in there. It's just, it's garage sale stuff. So, um, and they've put off cleaning it up for a long period of time. And I think that's why we just kind of forced the hand here. Knowing too, what's coming on the second part of this is that um, for a potential project that they're working on, maybe expedite that a little quicker too. I, I would guess what you're saying is it can't be put on the historic registry, but it's still historic. It was in Bellevue. It was, as I understand it, an operating train depot. Kids did go on tours in it. It does, to me, have value. And well, this and the other ones, whether it's the, the log cabin, that to me is a good use of community betterment money because of the history that's there that I think future generations should have access to. And it's, it, and I won't argue that it's not a historical building. It's just, it's not in a registry. Um, so again, but if it would be like the bank or the log home that's being used productively for tours and for the educational part, they've literally just jammed junk in that building. And that's kind of where it's, you're not using it for what it was intended to. Now you're asking us to even upgrade it even more, fix more, or investing in something that is being used as a storage unit. And that's not the original purpose. So that's kind of why we held our ground on that one. Um, and, and I understand that. And I think we've cleaned up a lot of past issues and messes. And this is another one where a contract could be better. And working on agreements and those contracts to improve them 
I, I think is good. And I again just hope that meetings go on. Yep. Okay. Any other comments on uh, reports? Seeing none, uh, we have no additional closed session. I will take a motion to adjourn if you wish. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Cook, second by Pricer to adjourn. Please vote. <clears throat> no discussion. <laughs> All voting yes. Motion carries.